This video demonstrates how to set the proper impeller clearance for Corkin's turbine pumps. This includes all models 10, 12, 13, 14, 16, 17, 18, and 19. Please refer to the applicable installation, operation, and maintenance manuals for detailed information and maintenance schedule on these pumps. The IOM manuals may be downloaded from Corkin's website at corkin.com. Please note these important safety tips. Periodic inspection and maintenance of the pump is essential. Equipment installation, operation, and maintenance should only be performed by qualified personnel. All procedures must comply with the Corkin installation, operation, and maintenance manuals, applicable local codes and safety standards. The transfer of toxic, flammable, or explosive substances is always at the user's risk. Review the installation, operation, and maintenance manuals before performing any maintenance procedures. As an impeller wears, the clearance between the impeller, cover, and casing can widen over time, causing a decrease in capacity. A periodic clearance adjustment is necessary to restore optimum capacity. Before Corkin's turbine pumps leave the factory, impeller clearance is set for maximum performance. Typically, one to two shims are inserted between the cover and pump casing. Over time, the impeller thins out, so one or two shims are removed to restore the proper impeller clearance to re-establish the maximum operating capacity of the pump. The tools required are a half-inch wrench or socket, a screwdriver, a file, spray lubricant, and a couple of old shims. Make sure the pump and or system has been depressurized. Begin by removing the eight bolts on the pump cover with a half inch socket or wrench. If the pump cover does not slide off, there are two jacking holes to assist with removal. Insert two cover bolts into the jacking holes and screw in until the cover pulls back from the pump casing. Remove the O-ring and shims from the pump cover. The green shim is three thousandths and the red shim is two thousandths. Remove the impeller and inspect for wear. Note the number two stamped on the impeller and the number two stamped on the pump cover. This number indicates the pump model. If the model number on the nameplate is missing or no longer readable, refer to these locations. The number 2 stands for model 12, a 3 is model 13, a 4 is model 14, etc. Reinstall the impeller. Clean the mating surface on the back side of the pump cover. If there are any burrs or rough marks on the mating surface or the leading edge of the cover, gently file until smooth. Next, clean the mating surface of the pump casing. Again, if there are any burrs or rough marks, gently file until smooth. Install the O-ring on the pump cover and reinstall without any shims using only four bolts. Insert four bolts and tighten in a cross pattern. Confirm the clearance by rotating the pump shaft. On C-model pumps, insert a screwdriver into the fan guard between the blades and try to spin the fan as shown. On F or DL model pumps, rotate the shaft by hand. Note whether the impeller rubs or is locked up. In this case, the pump shaft is locked up, so the impeller is still within tolerance. If the pump rotates freely, the impeller could be out of tolerance and must be checked which will be demonstrated later in this video. Remove the pump cover and install the thinnest shim, which is the 2000th red shim. To hold the shim in place, spray it with a small amount of lubricant. This keeps the shim from shifting and covering the bolt holes when installing the cover. Insert four bolts and tighten in a cross pattern. Rotate the pump shaft by inserting a screwdriver in the opening of the fan cover. The impeller is rotating but still rubbing against the pump cover. 
the clearance is still too tight, so additional shimming is required. Remove the cover and replace the 2000s red shim with a 3000s green shim, which adds an additional 1000s extra clearance. Insert the four bolts and tighten in a cross pattern. Rotate the pump shaft by inserting a screwdriver in the opening of the fan cover. The impeller now rotates freely, so it is within tolerance. Replacing the 2000s shim with the green shim makes the clearance approximately 3000s, which is optimum. Narrowing the impeller clearance improves the capacity of the pump, so it is now ready to be put back into service. Secure the pump cover using the eight bolts and tighten in a crisscross pattern to the torque value listed in the installation, operation, and maintenance manual. In the first scenario, the proper impeller clearance was set using one 3,000th green shim. If the pump shaft did not lock up after removing both shims, the tolerance of the impeller must be checked. Remove the cover and any existing shims. Leave the O-ring in place. Place a piece of old shim on the impeller or back side of the pump cover as shown. Apply a small amount of lubricant to hold it in place. Insert the four bolts and tighten in a cross pattern. Insert a screwdriver into the opening of the fan cover and rotate the pump shaft. In this example, the impeller is locked up or is rubbing on the small piece of shim. This indicates that the impeller is still within tolerance, so the pump can now be reassembled without using any shims. Conversely, if the pump shaft spins freely after adding the small piece of shim, the impeller is too thin and must be replaced. Remove the pump cover and the small piece of shim on the impeller. Reinstall the pump cover without any shims. Secure the cover with all eight bolts and tighten in a crisscross pattern. Torque the bolts to the value listed in the installation, operation, and maintenance manual. Lastly, confirm the pump shaft still spins freely using the screwdriver. The pump is ready to be put back into service. This completes the procedures for setting proper clearance for an impeller on a turbine pump. Visit the website often for the latest technical updates and news on all of Corkin's products.